Here we can see an electric circuit with the switch closed. Now under these circumstances, conventional electrical current flow will leave the positive of the battery at this point and will flow in the direction shown here. It will arrive at the switch, it will flow through the switch because obviously the switch is closed and then it will continue in this direction down here, coming along in this route through the lamp, lighting the lamp up as we can see and then we'll return back to the negative point of the battery. So electric current will flow in this way around the circuit. Now that's conventional electric flow. And what we're really looking at here is a switch. Now, one of the things we can do is open the switch. And when we open the switch, we will not get a flow of current. Now here we can see that the switch is actually open and under these circumstances there is no flow of electricity around this particular circuit and we can see that the lamp is actually off. Now what I'd like to do at this point is to concentrate on the switch. The switch is something that will control the flow of electric current. When it's open as we can see here it will not allow current to flow around the circuit and when it was closed as we've just observed a moment ago then it will allow electric current to flow round a circuit. Here we can see a symbol for a transistor. Now a transistor is an example of a semiconductor device and it's also frequently referred to as a solid state device. Now the reason it's called solid state is that it can act like a switch with no moving parts. Now normally when you switch a light on for example you know you have to move the switch itself. Whereas here with a transistor you can tell it to allow current to flow or tell it to stop current flowing in exactly the same way as a normal switch. Now to achieve that what you have to do you put in this region here a voltage level, a pulse, a high pulse. And when you do that, this will allow current to flow in this particular direction through the device. And that is an example of current flow. So it's behaved like a switch there, it is allowed current to actually flow. Now if we want to make the transistor stop current flow, then it's quite simple, we put a low signal level here a low pulse and what that will do is to stop current flowing in other words current will not be able to flow from this point to this point here in other words it's a bit like opening the switch and we can see that we've opened the switch with a, uh, a low pulse which stops current flowing so a transistor can act as a switch here we can see the symbol for an amplifier and within an amplifier there will be transistors. Now we've seen a transistor can act as a switch but together with other components they can also act as an amplifier. Now what an amplifier does is quite simple. It takes as an input to an amplifier a small signal like this and then at the output it produces a much bigger signal. So we can see a transistor acts as an amplifier as you can see here which is a very useful feature of a transistor. But for the purpose of logic gates, we're really interested in a transistor performing as a switch. <laughs>